Hi, and welcome to Unity Through Community. I'm Mary O'Brien, Director of Community Education for the Hastings Public Schools. Um, as we taped this, last night we had a really, I think, very invigorating and uh, hopeful conversation uh, put on by the uh, Hastings Schools, and in particular the school board, called Vision 2025. And it was an opportunity for community members to come together and talk about what do we want for the Hastings Schools. And uh, it was really interesting. I can, I can always tell when an evening conversation is interesting that I didn't start looking at my watch till about 20 minutes before it was supposed to be over, which is good because it was uh, later in the day. But um, I hope that you will kind of uh, stay tuned uh, talking to your fellow residents and also watching what's going on on the district website as um, these conversations then evolve into what are the next steps to help us make some really informed, positive, good decisions for the Hastings Public Schools. So uh, I just want to give a shout out in particular to our superintendent, Tim Collins, and uh, our school board chair, T uh, Vince O'Brien, I'm Tim O'Brien, he's at the Green Mill, <laughs> you know, all these O'Briens in town. Um, and also all the members of the, of the school board because that's a big step to take. You know, it was a, a tough uh, spring making some very difficult decisions and uh, they heard from people that these were hard decisions and, you know, if we're gonna keep making them, we need to do it with a lot of input. And so this really opened up some lines of communication. So um, please stay tuned. These are your schools. You know, even if you don't have kids in school, um, if you're a member of the community, you well know your taxpayer dollars go towards supporting the schools, towards supporting our facilities. And um, I think it's critical that we all stay involved. So um, thank you for that. Uh, as far as community ed goes, I have one little announcement I'm kind of sad about. Uh, we had planned and a Boomer Birthday Bash for um, a week from, uh, or Tuesday, no, Thursday, June 12th. Thursday, June 12th. And um, we had a band that was gonna come and play. We were gonna do hot dogs, and you hear me say that was gonna happen. So we had to cancel it. We didn't have enough people registered. Um, it doesn't mean that mm -hmm. we won't do it again. You know, I think having an event where you have dancing to live music will be great, but um, because of the cost of the band and we weren't able to at least meet the cost of the band, we decided we had to cancel. So um, if you were registered, you've already received a phone call that um, the event was canceled and uh, if not when you call they'll tell you that the event is canceled so I'm, I'm really sorry about that but you know sometimes you try something we think it's a good idea and it just doesn't pan out but we may revisit that one again so um, and we have another event coming up on Tuesday, June 19th, that um, if you were going to come to the Boomer Birthday Bash and you were thinking about coming to this one, um, I would say, you know, this is free, so you really want to uh, get registered for it. And it's uh, a really interesting opportunity for you to come and listen and talk. Um, I don't think we have so many opportunities where we come together around the table and we just listen and talk. Um, one of my favorite quotes is, listen, listen with the intent to understand, not with the intent to be heard. And I think that's a really nice umbrella for um, this conversation. And a good segue to introduce my guest today, uh, Bill Spinelli, who many of you know works with Alina Clinics and um, has been very active here in Hastings. Uh, works also at the University of Minnesota with the Encore program. Mm -hmm. And you can maybe tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, um, so it's a workshop called Encore Transitions, Mary. And what we do with that workshop is trying to help people and look through the next stages of their life mm -hmm. beyond their primary career. Okay. So help uh, to think about uh, what are the things they want to do when they're either retired or post-primary career. What are the opportunities? What are the possibilities? And I think we actually had a baby boomer coffee and conversation yeah. about that yeah. not too we long ago. Yeah, we had a, anyway. a great yeah. panel. We had 75 people who yeah. came, and um, <laughs> you did a wonderful job of, of facilitating that. The you know one thing there were many things that people said that night that really resonated with me, but the one I've repeated to a number of people who are of a certain age. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes, yes. is uh, that you know as you move into that phase of your life, it's the ride you want to be on, not the ride somebody puts you on. Yeah, exactly. And um, it was a pretty easy evening to be part of because of the community was more than willing to be to share both their ideas and some of their questions. And uh, it was fun to watch the conversation between the 
folks in the audience. Cool. Yeah. Um, and my other guest today is Dick Graham. Um, Dick was uh, in his first career the exec was the executive director at Darts. Correct. Okay. And um, Dick has since moved on and uh, is now the is it the executive director? No, uh, I am currently the chair of the Hastings Prescott Area Arts Council. Okay. HPAC. Okay, which is a group that just received our annual Community Ed Bernie McCoy Service Award, um, which is given to an organization that really embraces the concept of um, community education. And that's one thing I'm just so excited to see HPAC doing, which is really energizing and um, invigorating the community to talk about how the arts can be um, a more vibrant part of Hastings. And in doing so, my opinion is that you guys are transforming a lot of the conversations here in Hastings. Well, thank you, Mary. You know, that's what, that's what the arts are supposed to do, mm -hmm. either community or individually. We can all point to examples where there are some bare walls that become pl places of beauty because of art and people's lives and souls can have that same kind of transformation. So it's, it's great to be working with you. Oh, mm -hmm. well, I'm, I'm excited for that. That's such a benefit to all of us. To, and, you know, I think I've mentioned here before uh, our collaboration, one of our collaborations with HPAC does enliven the uh, walls at Tilden. The white walls become filled with art and we are just such mm -hmm. wonderful beneficiaries great. of it. So thank you. Great. Well, and so for, for our purposes today, um, Bill called me, I think in February, and mm -hmm. said, yeah. you know, there's this grant sitting out there that we might have an opportunity to, uh, to apply for. And um, it, it was really inter interesting to me because um, it, it does challenge us, does challenge the community to think about what are the very foundations of our country. Mm -hmm. And so it's called uh, Toward a Mer More Perfect Union. And do you want to describe like the genesis of it and, and how it came to be and then how we got the grant? Yeah. So um, the Minnesota Humanities Center has been really interested over the last few years in bringing humanities out into the communities and asking what is the... Can, can you talk about, okay, so just in general, what are the humanities? Right. So, so humanities is a fairly broad topic. We usually oftentimes think of humanities as being uh, literature or poetry, mm. but it's a broad spectrum of things that make us a culture. Okay. Uh, arts, uh, literature, conversation, which is really what we're about now, and also um, David O'Fallon, who is the executive director, is interested in sparking more interest in the community in what the Constitution is and how it means, how it becomes meaningful in our lives. Okay. Many of you may have seen last year a series of programs produced by Twin Cities Public Television called Constitution USA, in which Peter Sagal rode his motorcycle around the United States and just asked everyday citizens about the Constitution and okay. how they understood it and how it was real in their lives. And it was an extraordinarily successful four-part series, each part being one hour long. Mm. That was the template for Toward a More Perfect Union. Um, David O'Fallon and um, his staff partnered with TPT to... Uh, Twin Cities Public Television. I'm sorry, thank you. That's Twin okay. Cities Public Television, okay. TPT, to use the Constitution USA series as a springboard for communities within the state of Minnesota to ask those same kinds of questions of themselves and more importantly, to share in conversation with each other about the Constitution. So what we're hosting here in Hastings is a series of three conversations, the first one being, as you mentioned, June 19th, in which we're going to show a shortened version of those uh, clips to the audience and then in invite the community of Hastings to ha answer some questions and to talk about their personal lived experience. One of the peculiarities of the Constitution is it's designed to create debate. Mm. And one of the things that we don't want to do in this evening is to have debate. Right. There's no <laughs> shortage of opportunity for debate and there's no shortage of need for debate. But in this situation, what we really like people to do is to begin to become somewhat more reflective mm. and um, think about how this Constitution really has shaped and formed both our country and then us individually. The things that we get to do, the things that we maybe can't do, 
mm -hmm. the way we can relate to our neighbors. Okay. So that's the, that's the sense of what we're, we're trying to accomplish with this project. Okay. And Dick, how did uh, HPAC get involved in this? Well, um, Bill approached us uh, about the opportunity to partner with Community Ed and the Minnesota Humanities Commission uh, on a community project, community conversation. And um, we, uh, as an organization, uh, promote and support arts and artists, so that we saw this as a very um, exciting, exciting uh, event to, to, to support. Um, we, uh, <coughs> we really like the idea of uh, uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that actually uh, the uh, whole HPAC uh, organization started with some community conversations. So the idea mm. of the art of conversation uh, really appealed to uh, some of the people on our board and said, well, you know, we, we need to be there. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I'm really excited that we were able to, um, yeah. to collaborate and, and work together on this because um, I know there were, there were a number of communities that applied to, that did not get the grant and mm -hmm. um, I think for Hastings to be given this um, this opportunity to talk about um, uh, how and, and you know just like you said how does this impact our lives because we don't first of all we don't take much time for reflective conversation anyway no. you know um, we're all so busy with our lives and we are mm -hmm. just trying to stay one step ahead of the right. game so to have an evening where we're really just going to sit back and look at something and say okay what mm -hmm. what does this mean um, and the the framer for us here in Hastings is how the Constitution built the Hastings Bridge um, now literally the Constitution mm -hmm. did not build the yeah. Hastings Bridge. So can you explain <laughs> how this is yeah. kind of all coming together? Thanks, Mary. Yeah, this is the Constitution, folks. That's not got too many <laughs> hard hats on it. I haven't seen any <laughs> no, no, brains, no, right? No, no, no. I, I think the message that we want to convey with this first session is, is, is the episode that we're going to be uh, visualizing, the thing we're going to be watching that Peter, Peter does, is he talks about what's called federalism and states' rights, okay. which is really this, this balance, this tension that was built into the Constitution about the responsibility of the federal government and the responsibility of the state governments and how they complement and contradict one another. Okay. And I think, as you know, when we thought about this notion of the const how the Constitution built the, U uh, the uh, Hastings Bridge, it's a wonderful example. This bridge was built with federal money, state money, city money with federal and state engineering and consulting. County. Uh, county money, thank you, county. And so it's really a collaboration of government at all its levels. Um, and, and that is, I think, part of the genius of the Constitution that allows these interesting things to occur. Mm -hmm. And uh, many times it's in the background. Mm -hmm. Now, we certainly had plenty of dialogue in the, the national stage about, well, the Constitution should say this or the Constitution does say that but really we don't see how it acts sometimes in our lives. Right, and I think one of the things to remember as you come to this, and uh, Dick and Bill and I went to a training together, and there were people in the room who really knew their constitution. Boy, they could pick this up and they could cite you, you know, chapter and verse about what the constitution said, and we all looked at each other and went, oh, we don't know that so much. Mm. Um, but we do know how the constitution yeah. has, has impacted our lives, even though we may not articulate it that way. Right. Um, so, for example, in the, um, uh, uh, I think in, in the, the deal with, uh, or the little video clip we saw with Peter Sagal, um, one of the things that really tended to, to get people to go, are you kidding me, was a decision about um, uh, how they sell. Well, oh, was, so yeah, the, uh, Okay, so now, so first of all, you should know that none of us are constitutional no. scholars, right? Okay. And, and, well, which is probably pretty apparent. Right, well, and that's the piece I want everybody to understand yeah. is that if, you know, the last thing you remember about the Constitution was, and I don't know if we still do this in school, that the kids have to memorize oh, yeah. the preamble or they have to know the Bill of Rights or whatever. Um, uh, or that you had a civics class or in your history mm -hmm. class, you kind of got a, a sense of, yeah, we have this constitution and we know right. that there are some amendments that keep coming, buzzing back, some court decisions. Um, you don't even need to know that. No, 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 thank you. You know, so um, because what, what the conversation will help you do is take that step back and maybe want to know more about 
uh, what the Constitution really is doing in your life. And, and I should also, this is a great promo, thanks for the <laughs> Um For the people who participate in the uh, session on June 19th, we will have a free copy of the U.S. Constitution for you to take home, if you're so inclined to read. Um, it is, it's an interesting document, and I have read it a couple times of in the last year or so for the first time since I was in middle school mm -hmm, or high school mm -hmm. doing my civics class. And it is, it's an interesting document. It's interesting to, to understand what, or try to understand what was being said in it. Um, and that's what we want to talk about this time, is try to understand what's, what's here and what it means, not necessarily what Amendment 4 of the Constitution says. Um, no. Uh, I can read it to you if you'd like, but that's not important. <laughs> what, you know, what I look forward to is, the, um, uh, is understanding and hearing uh, why people think the way they do about what the Constitution means. Yeah. You know, that, <clears throat> that if we can have, if we can be around the table and, uh, you know, this around the table and, and uh, it's not meant to be and it wouldn't be a, uh, as I understand it, a, you know, a kind of political conversation, mm -hmm. this is one of the, but to understand why my neighbor thinks this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where it comes from. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're immigrants, mm -hmm. and maybe maybe it's their great grandparents that came from Sweden who had some ideas about mm -hmm. the climate. Yeah. Learning that kind of, uh, um, um, learning that about about why people value the Constitution, I think, will uh, enhance just our ability and, and you know it, it, to to appreciate different opinions. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of central to what the Constitution is all about, too. Well, I, I think it's learning to appreciate each other, too. I think we, you know, we don't have a plethora of opportunities to be in a public space to have a conversation at any time with, with uh, others, mm -hmm. especially with people we don't know. Yeah. We, we really right. get caught up in hanging with our group, our circle, our friends, our church, our educational community mm -hmm. groups. Um, and don't expand out, and so this is an opportunity for that too. Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing is that we are all, we are talked to so much. You know, maybe mm -hmm. to your mm -hmm. point to your point that we hang out with people like us. We may be just getting our information from people like us too, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and and so that kind of carries over into community, and we. We, un we think that because we hear this all the time and never get a chance to talk back to where, where we learn about government, et cetera, et cetera, that, that uh, the opportunity to really exchange ideas uh, will be a very, uh, very important piece here. Yeah, and, and I really emphasize what Mary said early on. We're here to listen and, and um, understand what others are saying. We're not here to convince or change. So your quote right. at the opening, I appreciate mm -hmm. that, well, setting that well. frame. And I think with this, uh, in particular, one thing that uh, occurs to me with um, this conversation that we're going to be having about federal rights and state rights and how they sometimes intersect mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they butt heads. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think an example of that is uh, the federal government uh, kind of dictating this is your speed limit. Mm -hmm. If you want federal dollars for your roads, mm -hmm. you have to have a certain speed limit for you know when the interstates go through your state you can't have it lower and you can't have it higher um, and you know so I look at that and I, I say well from my <coughs> perspective that's good because if I'm traveling an interstate I like to put the cruise on and I want it at you know a little over 70 if the speed limit is 70 <laughs> and uh, I just want to go and uh, if I hit a state where you know, it's down to 55 well that impacts my life mm -hmm. you know in just a, a small way and then uh, you know, you start to think, okay, well, how come they have the right to do that? Mm -hmm. You know, um, and what happens if we decline federal dollars? One of the things we're seeing with some of th some school districts, not sure. the Hastings schools, but some um, other school districts, is they're now declining federal dollars for the um, for the free and reduced lunch mm -hmm. um, program because they're saying, you know, some of the <coughs> strictures on here aren't meeting the needs of our students. Well, mm -hmm. under the Constitution, we have the right to do that. Right. I mean, there's a consequence to it. You don't, mm -hmm. you don't get the, the dollars that, that go with it. But, um, you know, we do have that right. The Constitution says to us, you can make those decisions. There are also times, and I'm sure with the building of the bridge, there might have been some things that the state or the county wanted to do that the federal government said, no, if you're, you mm -hmm. know, going to take our dollars, and it was a substantial Right. amount and it caused you to kind of rethink mm -hmm. how you do it so um, mm -hmm. you know I think we all have those incidences right. in our life 
where there was something we wanted to do and the law said we could or we couldn't. Right. Um, and you know, living so close to Wisconsin, there are things you can do in Minnesota that you can't do in mm -hmm. Wisconsin, you know, and then there are things that you can't do in Minnesota that you can do in Wisconsin, i.e. go across the bridge and buy beer on, on <laughs> Sunday. Right, Sunday. Right. Well, so. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the other, <coughs> the other interesting uh, part of the bridge construction that I think is a federal guideline is that a percentage of all public projects have to have an arts component. Oh, so that if okay. you go under the bridge right now, down on 2nd Street, and mm -hmm. you can right. see this, these huge murals that are going up commemorating the history of Hastings. How cool! And that, I mean, that is, that's a kind of another little, uh, uh, what can you call it, a little incentive to bring sure. some beauty to the community. And you know the other piece uh, that always is interesting, uh, to me anyway, is that realizing that we get in the car and drive out to Yellowstone or up to mm. Boundary Waters to visit a national park. And we are in a national park down along the river. And what does that mean? The, 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 national, uh, the, the national Park Service has jurisdiction over uh, the land from bluff to bluff, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, south of the St. Croix all the way up to the Coon Rapids Dam. It's something like 72 miles of national park. Okay. And I think we're going to see on the other side of uh, on the coming into Hastings, coming into the valley. I think there's going to be a sign that designates that this area is a part of the national park system. Mm -hmm. And and again, what 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 does that mean? It's, it seems to be an amazing asset that right. we have here. Right. And yeah. I think sometimes we do take that for granted. <clears throat> you know um, that that this happens. That change to the Constitution happens without a political overthrow. Mm -hmm. um, you know that um, uh, it's just such a remarkable document, and we just haven't spent enough time thinking about right. how it's going to impact right. our lives. So, I, I just really have to emphasize: you don't have to be a scholar to show right. up. In fact, right. we may right. actually discourage scholars because no. you may overwhelm us. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, no. So please, please, please. We, we want to hear your thoughts. We want to have you share your ideas with the rest of the folks in the community. That's what right. it's all about. Right. Yeah. And so this first episode, um, there are some common questions that... Right. So we should, we should say there are how many grantees in the state? There are Do you eight communities, seven plus okay. Hastings. Okay. Um, and they range from being very rural to um, actually one of, them is in, one of them is in Minneapolis with an immigrant population of Somali. Oh, that's right. Im Somali immigrants are going to be asking these same questions. I think that would be fun to hear what their story is. So there's eight around the state. We intend to host three sessions. Mm -hmm. It will be the first one June 19th. We'll have a second session in August. And help me, Mary, it's August 17th? I, I it's, think it's, it's the yeah, third it's week. The, it's third, a, the third Tuesday in, in August. August. And then likewise in October. The um, third Tuesday the third in Thursday October. Third Thursday in October. So please keep your eye open to the, uh, the community at Bolton. But um, we'll be talking about two other uh, segments of the uh, Constitution, two other ideas that are embedded in it and um, have a series of questions we want folks to, or invite folks to reflect on and see what we can learn. Yeah. I Pretty think fun. that's gonna be, it's just really gonna be interesting. And, and um, <coughs> as prep work for the, um, for the, um, the conversations, you know, really what, what uh, you have to do is just bring your, bring your own experiences because right. that's something that was emphasized to me at the workshop is that um, what we want people to talk about, so we'll throw out a question, but we want to talk about what do you think? How did this impact you? Um, you know, uh, I think in the, um, in the clip we see uh, Peter Sagal talking to people about something that can be fairly inflammatory, which is the right to bear arms. Right. And, uh, you know, that's in the federal constitution, but states have uh, impacted that by making certain laws and, uh, mm -hmm. and as you move from state to state to state, it's different. Or, or city to city even. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And so, you know, again, there's the, the benefit of the, the constitution is that it, it really uh, solidifies and ensures that we're going to be able right. to have right. those kinds of uh, uh, abilities to make up our minds for ourselves yeah. and you know I think um, you know we've had uh, a number of uh, and working with our um, adult basic education program and our English language learners um, <coughs> just hearing what people's uh, opinions are and, and what people's life experiences mm -hmm. are about their government and how their government has impacted their life and um, uh, 
uh, that they they come here and they're just astounded. Right. right you know, right. Um, I've had uh, participants just be astounded that on the day after an election, there's not a revolution in mm, the streets. Right, right. You know, that the, the people from the losing party don't come out and start trying to, you know, kill right. the people who won. Right. That's just a common thing in their country. And right. here, we don't have that. And again, it's right. the Constitution ensures, and we've all ascribed to that. Mm, right. You know, I mean, we, we kind of ask about it, but we've all said, nope, this is important to us. Right. Mm -hmm. right. The other thing <clears throat> that I'm always reminded of is that it, it seems like there's not a moment that we breathe that we aren't interacting with government. Oh, and, okay. And you know, and it's not government as a bad, but, but uh, we want clean air. Mm -hmm. we, we need clean air to survive. Mm -hmm. uh, we like to uh, sleep safely in our houses at night. Mm -hmm. uh, we like to drive on highways that you know we're not somebody's not going to slam into us and nothing happens. So just thinking about the thinking about all of the, the the ways that we our lives are interacting with and, and you know government of the people, by the people, it's we're really interacting with each other and mm -hmm. through through some organizations that we've created as as voters. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw so and then you talk about the immigrants, uh, you know, this evolution of our country uh, and how the how the Constitution has been that document that uh, has made sure that you know the that mm -hmm. everybody can become a part of the democracy. There hasn't been, there have been, there's been struggles. Yeah. But it seems to be continually evolving. And so what's going on around us today that's, that's changing? Right. 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 And, and how does that, um, and in this first particular conversation, again, it, you know, for me, the, the focus <laughs> is on how uh, the federalism and states' rights uh, either intersect or they they conflict, and then what happens? Right. Yeah. You know, and how do we as individuals mm -hmm. um, really have the right and responsibility to say something about that? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. we uh, we just don't sit back and let it happen. So, okay. So just to wrap up, it's uh, Tuesday, June seventeenth. It's at Tilden Community Center. We have a dinner, free dinner at six, and the conversation will go from six thirty to eight or eight thirty. Um, we will be seeing a video clip from um, uh, Constitution USA. Uh, and, you know, this really is an all ages, I would say, you know, from, oh, from middle school uh, all the way up. So um, you don't have <coughs> to be 50 plus. I think sometimes people <laughs> think some of, you know, they look at us and go, it's the old fogies talking again. You know, you know we really want to hear from everybody in the community and yeah. give people a chance to just come together and have some civil dialogue, civil discourse, which, right. yeah. you know, how lovely is that on a summer right. evening? Right, exactly. Yeah. So Dick and Bill, thank you very much thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. for thank being here today. And um, we will see you again. Enjoy the summer weather and thank you for being here today.